we've got uh, the Minicon, Partial Conference Europe Minicon on the 15th of October, 2024. It's an online event, anyone can attend, and it's free. You just have to register to make sure you receive the, uh, the event, and then we allow your account to come over. And it's a lot of fun. It, and it's a lot of fun. It's like, yes, it's more interactive than a call where someone speaks and you have to attend. It's more like um, it's something that you can interact and you can, you know, meet people on, you know, visit the world. Uh, this is the agenda. Again, you can find it on the website. And uh, I wanted to, especially for this group, point, point out that we've got Michael Green doing a presentation on DSCV3 and then updating about um, the planning and maybe doing some demos. I don't know what he's going to talk about, but I'm curious to see that. And uh, there's plenty of other talks on, on interesting stuff. And if you happen to be interested in PowerShell Europe, we will announce where it will be next year and some of the information. That's it. Um, today, we have someone who's, I think, is it your first community call? Or have you been there before? In this one is the first, yeah, and I was, I think, a previous call in the Power Show community call. So tell us, who are you, what do you do, and why are you here? Uh, well, uh, why am I here for today's session is um, uh, yeah, just a little community project I was uh, working on uh, lately. That's just a simple wrapper around uh, uh, the, the new uh, DSC executable. Uh, what I'm uh, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm just a cloud engineer working at uh, uh, Rabobank. Uh, we're currently maintaining a bunch of infrastructure as code um, um, virtual machines, so we had to maintain them. And then uh, I started investigating into DSC and came to find out during that period. I think it's now all, already nearly a year ago. I think that there was a preview on uh, DSC uh, V3. Or it was an alpha back then. Um, so uh, then I started investigating uh, time uh, in there. So yeah, that's me. So so what's your name? Where do you live? Uh, my name is Thijs. I live in the Netherlands, uh, a little bit like in, let's say, uh, the north. Um, I love to do uh, a gym in the morning. I'm an early, uh, early um, owl, let's so to say. And then... I think I'm at four o'clock in the gym, and then most of the time I work at six o'clock till whatever so brings the day, right? Four o'clock in the gym, that means that was like some 20 hours ago. Oh no, maybe not 20 hours, but close, yeah, like 17 uh, hours ago or something, right? It's a, it's a long day uh, for me, so if I'm a little bit uh, uh, trying to find my words, I'm tired, I'm a little bit sick, so uh, forgive okay. me there. Yeah. So do you have some demos for us today? Today, uh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Do you want me to share the screen? Do you want me to take over if I can? Yes. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good question. Can we give you? Uh, can you try at least? I will stop first of all sharing, and take it away if you can. Uh, let's see. Otherwise, maybe Mike can help out. There you go. Perfect. You go. Thank you. Is it visible for everyone? Yeah. Good to me at least. Yeah, all right. good to me. Um, so uh, this, repo uh, this repository is still uh, private, but my intention is actually just to uh, open it publicly uh, because, uh, as you can see, I have now seven seven commands in this uh, in this module to work with the new uh, 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 DSC V3 uh, executable. Yeah, a simple reason why did I start this uh, project? Well, there is, I guess, also a reason why Crescendo, uh, the, like the module, exists, right, to wrap around uh, uh, executables. And I was, when I was learning DSC V3, I was noticing that I was still falling back on, on PowerShell and working with PowerShell. So um, that, that got me thinking in creating some uh, commands to, to make, uh, life a little bit uh, uh, easier to work with uh, with V3, I suppose. So, yeah, to start off, of course, you need uh, DC in itself. So, um, I think Steve uh, released the uh, desired states configuration preview in the um, uh, in the Microsoft Store. So, 
I'm now using Winca to install DSC, um, and yeah, I'm planning to support maybe also, of course, for macOS and uh, Linux because we can use it now on these uh, systems. Uh, but for now, um, this is this is just a command using uh, Wing uh, underneath to uh, install uh, DSC. Um, some other examples that I can um, show you. Um, one which is pretty interesting is like um, I, I borrowed uh, most of the code underneath uh, from from the community anyway. But um, one one of the things that I found useful is when you have a configuration from V1 and V2, um, you can use the convert uh, to DSC JSON command, and then it it creates like a document that you can instantly send to DSC config and then the operation that you want to do. So uh, that easily uh, allows you to convert um, yeah your configuration documents from V1 to V2. Um, yeah, to give you an example how that would look like, I hope I had the module. Does it use AST to to read or what yes. does it do? Yeah. Yes, it uses AST indeed. Um, I think if I do this, yeah, maybe it doesn't work because I think. Um, you forgot to use name parameters probably. Oh. Mm -hmm. Probably it's not, uh, it's working. So then you get instantly back your document, right? So what in essence, it's probably not going to work, but then you can say like, hey, um, start with this command and then operation is get, and then you can see what it's doing underneath, right? It's just sending that JSON to DC and then it's uh, grabbing um, um, all, all the uh, output from uh, DC and just dump it in some kind of object. Yeah, that's that's what PowerShell is good at, right? Uh, and that's why we all still love PowerShell to work with to work with objects. Well, in this case, I, I don't. I think I've multi module, so it's failing. Don't worry. Uh, don't worry about it. But um, it has something to do with the uh, caching um, uh, when you're using like this adapter, right? And I think so, yeah, PS Desired State Configuration Module is one of the least easy to work with exactly uh, yeah i picked uh, i guess i picked the wrong uh wrong yeah, example. It, yeah that's the example problem so if you use something like uh, xpsdsc resource or something like that it would probably yeah. work better yes exactly, exactly so if i was lucky i tried to do this this morning uh, but um everybody knows of course uh, that dsc doesn't ex uh, accept powershell scripts well uh, because we of course have that function I guess you should be able to do it like this as well. I tested it this morning, but not quite sure. Yeah, it did it. So you, that, you just that, have the same problem, right? Yeah, it, it adds the um, an additional feature that you can also send PowerShell scripts to, to the engine, but like PowerShell handles it uh, internally and then sends it uh, to, uh, to, the, um, to the executable, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's on that uh, part. Um, that, that's the interesting part as well, because the input can have like hash tables, uh, JSON, YAML, and PowerShell scripts instead of only JSON and YAML. So it extends uh, a little bit in that sense. Um, what's also nice is uh, you have, of course, config and a resource. So whenever you're doing like the resource one, what you don't have when you're doing the uh, executable, you don't have like the tab completion, right? Um, here I also included the tab completion and also for um, um, PowerShell resources, so class-based and I think script-based as well. How do you um, do that? Do you do you ask DSC to load the cached resource? So for um, um, resource, I, I always say. It's Incorrectly, comment based resources. Um, you can simply fetch it from the resource manifest and get like the uh, uh, schema information because um, I'll come back on your question. But what you can now also do is tap complete on this, and then you can see like hey, these are all the available uh, properties that you can set, right? So okay. that's also pretty interesting. This is the required one, this is the optional one. Um, 
the same is for comment based ones. So um, when I'm doing, let's say, uh, we pick the registry one and we go here, you can see like the same, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing behind the scenes is I'm calling registry.schema, grabbing the JSON output and then making, um, uh, just returning the full uh, JSON so people can easily fill it in. Uh, for um, um, adopted resources, I'm picking the cache file, looking in there, and then I'm seeing like a resource cache properties. I'm picking it up and making some kind of string of it, right? So that's on uh, that's on this part. Eventually, maybe it, it would also be nice if you can um, include it with like a, a, a bit the predictor, right? And register some kind of uh, of event, and then you can find a bunch of uh, bunch of values uh, to to use. Um, any questions, by the way? Yeah, where's the repo? Where's the repo? It's still private. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm planning actually to just make it public uh, or even maybe uh, get it on the DC community uh, uh, GitHub page. Sounds good. So how was it to, to work with the DSCV3? What did you find? What did you find like maybe the documentation was missing because obviously it's still work in progress. Did you have uh, did you have enough information from what you could find out on the web or or did you have any challenges that that you had to overcome to manage to do that? So um, I'm not, uh, let me start from the beginning. Um, I'm not that long in the DSC uh, world in itself. If you see the history of, uh, of DSC, if you start digging, you will find a lot of, uh, a lot of information. And uh, there is still a lot of information available from V1 and V2. And that, of course, makes sense because yeah, V3 is not, not at all. Uh, but um, uh, the most interesting part and uh, what I also like is like these new um, operations that exist, right? The export functionality, uh, the delete operation, um, uh, all these kind of stuff was pretty interesting to, to dive into. Coming back on documentation part, um, it's difficult sometimes to creates the concept that are now being built. And that's also understandable because they're still in preview, right? So they're still building and thinking about uh, some things. But if you're following along closely, uh, it's sometimes uh, you might hope that, for example, if you pick the registry uh, resource in itself, right? I think most of the development is around uh, there and you can see a ton of examples, but it's good to see the reason why the engine behaves in, in certain uh, ways on these kind of resources. And that's the kind of documentation that I was missing because you really need to uh, trigger the, the core engine to see uh, wh what, what is happening, right? Um, and that's fun, uh, that's fun, of course, as well. But for people that are new and you learn about V1 and V2, which is all PowerShell, and then you go to, to like DSC, V3, which is now more cross-platform. It's not cross-platform, but more cross-platform, how, uh, how they have said it. Um, uh, it. It might be challenging to grasp these concepts, right? So uh, that's- It's got the also, same name, but it's not the same thing. I'll put I know, it like this. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, okay. um, that's, that's why I created this project as well, because there's a lot of learnings in there. Um, coming back on, on some other commands, so you can see it in here, what you can do with it. I also made like a simple command to add like the IntelliSense in VS Code. It might be for people that start out, simple option, just dump it in your uh, settings and JSON and then IntelliSense for people that are authoring um, uh, their documents, it's easier. Um. So what kind of resources did you use for testing? Which one did you try? Which one didn't work? Maybe what was it anything specific about, you know, using the DSC resources when you were doing the, this development? Mm, I didn't fully get the question. Huh? So, so let's say you, you know, you, you've shown uh, some examples with the registry resource, I believe, which if I remember, if I assume correctly, 
you use the one which has been developed by Steve, yeah. uh, which is uh, which is in Rust, I believe. Yeah. Yes. So there's this one, but there's another which is the X registry resource. So did you use any? Uh, did you try to use any of the community resource? And on, the question behind it is, you know, maybe with by doing this, you've been uh, trying to use some DSC community resources, and then some didn't work. Maybe there's some challenges using them, or maybe they just work. So, what's your experience with some of the resources? Um, I've tried a couple of them, uh, at least from the community-based one, and I, I haven't really seen that none of them worked. There are some slight differences in the like the output itself, what comes back in DSC V3 itself. And I thought like, hey, this is the, 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 the like the key value pairs don't, don't match. Mm. Um, and I think I've reported some of them also like on, on GitHub. Um, what I was thinking of though, because now that you have like the, the convert to DSC JSON, right? It might be quite easy to fetch all the examples which are available in the DSC community repositories, right? And try to run it against uh, against it, and yeah, you you get instant results back if it's still yeah. working in the V3 engine, right? For example, yeah, we, just uh, just a thought. We could benchmark some of them, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That might be easier with your module, so then we can try to. To use the module, and then we just do as you show, and you know, create the script, and then maybe, uh, maybe try to run it, and then see what happens. Uh, that sounds good. It would be good actually that maybe you 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 know in in your project, if you open source it, you write like a little documentation using this. What are the steps to test your DSC resource, your DSC community resource with DSC v3? So yeah. as you should as you've shown earlier, you do you know install the CLI. And then you take the example, you create, uh, you you generate the JSON from the example, and then you try to run it, or you just get the resource, and then uh, make sure it's uh, seen by DSC uh, v3, and then you try to uh, you try to execute it with the auto completion. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I already tried to do a little bit in the documentation uh, with uh, with examples here. Uh, with... Chronologically, it might be a little bit uh, different uh, <laughs> to get started. Well, that's interesting. How long have you been working on this? On 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 this repository? Ah, that's some time. That's some time. <laughs> got a bunch of uh, uh, functions, as you can see. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, no, that's interesting. I recognize the layout. Yeah, um, something, I, familiar. I uh, something familiar, something familiar. <laughs> now I, I, I can't, uh, uh, I, I love using it. So uh, uh, my compliments are there as well to you and of course to uh, the community that's uh, contributing to uh, Sampler. Yes, yeah, that's the same process. So that way it would be an easy one to integrate um, in the DSC community. Okay, that's great. And um, as anyone, any question? Doom, doom, doom. Ryan, I know you have <laughs> I knew it. Go ahead. Take the mic and go ahead. I think Nico was going. Don't be shy. Can you even hear me? Yes, I can now. Uh, well, that helps. Um, so I think you covered actually everything that I, wanted, I was going to ask. To be honest, which is always a good sign. Too easy. Now we just want it to open source now. Now we just want to see. Yeah, we want to see. Go, is go, it published? Go click the button. <laughs> go and click the button. Is, is it published on the? Is it published the on the gallery? Yes. No, I, I I screwed up when I uh, was uh, implementing uh, Winget in the install uh, DSC CLI. Somehow it broke uh, the build, so I. Uh, okay. I, I have to look uh, look to it, but then I was planning to uh, to dump it to the gallery. So the problem with open source projects, like it's only when you have time. <laughs> yes, it's the on the side thing. Yeah. Is there any other question? 
when, what, what, what's the roadmap? What are the things you'd like to achieve with this? Like where do you want to go? And then are you looking for help on this kind of stuff? Obviously, you're not looking for help because otherwise it would be open source. But um, no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm teasing, obviously. But, uh, but you know, what, what's your what's your expectations and what's your roadmap? What is the, the feature list you would like to reach or the stuff you would like to happen? Um, so the first some feedback, like how how is the module going to do if I open source it and if I set <laughs> it on the gallery? Uh, just just do some feedback because I, I think that always uh, gets uh, gets the ball rolling, uh, right? Um, um, would I need help? Maybe like with with the predictors, if that's something useful, especially for uh, people to have, because what I hope what the module would achieve is help people transition from like C1, C2 to C, C3 uh, way more easier. Um, and I, I, for, I totally forgot to edit, uh, um, edit to like, um, the, the feedback itself is what I noticed when I was learning this stuff is that most development happens now on the class-based DC resources, even though that many resources are still script-based. If you see the movement uh, going on, also let's let's take for example the, um, uh, the, the the I think it's the team from Demeters, if I say his name correctly. Um, the Winget team. The the Winget uh, the Winget team. Uh, they recently released like that VS Code DSC um, uh, module. Um, that's yes. also class based. So you see at least from the Microsoft side uh, things focusing uh, on on there, and I think that's also uh, useful to um, have. And if if it's going to be in, in this module to have some boilerplate for people to get started, because class based. Uh, creating class-based DC resource is different. Yes, I think it should live somewhere else, and and uh, I think we already have some class-based examples. And I know the GEA DSC res uh, resource module is current is is class-based. So yeah, I know there's not few, that many. It's quite no, a few in the SQL one as well. Yeah, yeah, actually, probably uh, Johan moved some of those, but um, um, but that's probably the two repos that um, that really had to go at going fast based. Uh, the other ones I, just maintain and change, but that would be I the think, way to go. I think as, the, as a devil yeah, team was, yeah. was supposed to. That was my plan because I was going to um, present it at PSCon for you twenty twenty two, and then well, life happened. And somebody else then did all the work, so I, can, I can't take the credit for it. But they did did a, a lot of lot of work in that re repo, and there's a lot more that's coming in. Um, was it Michael so, or was it someone else? No, uh, it was a guy called Paul, if I remember rightly, um, up in Leeds, who just okay. messaged. He messaged me on uh, in uh, the DSE channel. And Discord yes. and was like, yes, uh, I, I'd, I'd like to work on this. And then he just sent a massive load of PR. Um, That's cool. <laughs> try and make your PR smaller than like 500 files. Uh, that, I think that's, I saw that's my my suggestion, especially for new code bases. One one more one more thing uh, to add to like the class based uh, development. What, what's the most interesting part in V3 is to see like the behavioral changes that are happening, for example, uh, with the export uh, operation and with the delete operation. What, what I was especially looking for when learning all the stuff for V3 is like, okay, how do you need to create it in then in a class-based DSC resource? Because for example, if you look to like the Visual Studio DSC one, um, when you do a get operation, it returns all the ins uh, installed components, which is actually not true. So I created like what was it this morning? I think a PR implementing the export method in there, and I think it totally needs a rewrite on 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 the get method. But I now have that knowledge. 
knowing the behavior of the core engine. Uh, but of course, maybe uh, one month later it can change. But if it doesn't stand anywhere, it's pretty difficult, I guess, for people coming to the community, especially DC, because it's rich. I've seen it. Um, difficult yeah. to grasp that concept. Yeah, true. Uh, but uh, yeah, the other problem is it's it's hard to compete on different ways of doing things with the same name. But uh, that's, uh, that's another problem. <laughs> so, so the problem is people, when, when they will search, they will get hit on, on the old stuff, but they won't yeah. necessarily get this, the hits on the new stuff. So that's uh, another challenge in, in spreading uh, the good words about class-based and about DSCV3. But, but yeah, that's a good challenge to have. So we need to improve the documentation on that as well. That would be good. Cool. Oh, uh, nice that... If we could build an engine to be able to convert MOS-based to class, but that's going to be a big piece of work, and I don't think that's something we could automate. No, we had we had many times the discussion, and I don't think that's the 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 real challenge with this that I, I think we would have is it's not about changing the class of well the script from PSM one to a class, and I think the main challenge would be to change all the tests and to make them compatible with the class, and I think that's the bigger challenge. Um, doing just the work on the class on and usually so i've done that before changing you know uh the old style moth by moth based resource to a class based resource just doing this takes for for like a medium size it's it's about a day's work right maybe a bit less it can be two hours depending on the of the module but that's not too long what really takes time is changing the tests and testing all of the things if you look at the number of tests we have in some projects that would take forever so um so that's one of the challenges that and then and then the question is you know we always have to see what, what's relevant and stuff like that but then my opinion is if uh, if dscv3 starts to go ga at some point and then you know at least it's going the right direction and then like it keeps going and then people see the use case and then find it people will find the time you know in, interested people will find the time to uh, migrate rewrite or, or change uh, the, the DS resources, in my opinion. So I'm not too worried about, worried about that, like making sure that DSCV3 does the right stuff. At the moment, this is what's critical. And I'm sure the, the, the Microsoft teams really understand that. And, and you see, you've got um, the Images team that is creating some resources and they show, they're showcasing at the same time, you know, with WinGet configure, you know, how you can, conf well, how you can configure your machines um, using a DSC, it's still not the the same thing, but you know they're getting there. They will converge, and then I think that's going to be very interesting um, going forward. And I don't know exactly what uh, what Michael has for um, Minicon in two weeks, but uh, but he will show the planning on on the we will see what happens on, and if they've got a roadmap or if they've got some high level plans. They will never commit on time, but they have. High level plan. So I'm I'm curious about that. Is there anything else people want to ask, or is there anything else unrelated that people want to discuss? Oh, long question. Yeah. Like, uh, there's the website dscommunity.org, yeah, uh, right? That's mostly material for V1, V2. Yes. What's the You're it's open. It's open. It's on GitHub. Uh, I, I will send the link. Uh, it's uh, probably from memory. It's github.com slash DSC community slash DSC community dot org. From the top of my head, it's something uh, like that. And that's the repository. And anyone, and I really say anyone can contribute and change it and update it. Um, this, uh, it's based on Hugo template. And then uh, you can just uh, do a PR for a new blog post, new articles, new stuff, and then we happily have it on this website. Oh, my, my, question, my question was more like, what are the thoughts and vision on on uh, the documentation there? The documentation on, you mean on, uh, on the DSP um, community? No, on V3 going forward. Yeah, but do you, do you mean from Microsoft? Or do you mean from no on, on on the community? Just DSC community. Well, for now, there's no 
documentation planned for there because there's not like it's hard to document uh it's hard to document how to use it you know in production when it's not production ready so there's that and then the question is well you need someone to write the documentation that's the second part yep. so that's what i'm saying like there's no plan but uh, we welcome you know any contribution for you know how to do like even if it's a simple article that would be great to have like you know if it's just a link if it's just taking well if you want to see this information go into this page if you want to do this go into that information like just this kind of content that would uh send people to the right direction for knowing more about v3 and over time we can phase out v2 and v1 if that makes sense but there's two okay. people using it that's the plan that's the other thing right for, for for sure, for sure. But what what you mentioned at the beginning, right? That if you now search for material which is like DSC, then you, you probably land on on that page, right? So for pu publicity, because if I believe uh, they're still mentioning Q3, Q4 that they're bringing uh, GA uh, to uh, to DSC. Um, I guess having some documentation available on. Uh, on on the site helps people get recognition to C3. Yes, so on this, so yes, we could do that on the DSC community side. Um, I also believe that uh, Mikey, uh, so Mikey Lamardi is working on the documentation on the Microsoft side, which would have a much greater impact anyway than what we can have. But then obviously, if we have anything like, if we have any content, then they, yes, it makes sense to share it. But the problem is we, we need someone to write the content. That's why I'm opening up. I'm not saying I'm never going to write content about this. I'm just saying like we need the content. So if you volunteer, thank you. All right. I will think, <laughs> I will think, I will think about it. I will think about it. There you go. It can be you know just the basics, you know, how to get started. And I think your module to get started is is really I think it's a really good thing where you can say, well, if you want, you can go and install this module once it's published, obviously. And then once you install the the, the module, you can install um, you can install the the DSP binary. And then once you got that, you can get started and test. And I think for people to get started without being in some unfamiliar land with just the DSC that they need to install from somewhere, just the PowerShell experience would help them. It makes it more familiar, and especially if you're going to go down the route of taking somebody from not having a lot of PowerShell experience to showcasing what PowerShell as an ecosystem can do, just being able to say, right, go to the gallery, download this module, and now you're going to learn about DSC and what this can do. That's a, a really good learning path to showcase just how much has gone on in the last 16 years. <laughs> Not quite yet. Not quite yet. To no, it's like 2006, 14, 13. 14. Like um, and, oh. and how much has gone on in the last eight years since it was open sourced? True. <laughs> well, yes. A lot of stories. It seems so long ago. Yes. All right. Is there any other thing to discuss? If you have anything, if anyone also the there were updates to computer management DSC. I forgot the list. Uh, computer management DSC. Um, I don't have my emails right there. And the only one I've got to bring up. Active Directory DSC, and there was another one. SQL Server DSC. So at least three are updated. Go ahead. Um, so there was a thread that I was reading um, in the DSE repository with a request for setting SH configuration. So I've raised for uh, a resource in uh, computer, computer management DSE because I think it makes sense of being in that. Mm, should it? I don't think it should. Uh, it depends, but I'm not. I don't think it should because the main reason is I don't see. Is it just OpenSSH? Just to configure OpenSSH? Yep. Then there's two parts to it. 
they're installing you know the feature on a desk configuring the service yeah so some of the configuration of the service could be cross platform so do we want to do that in computer management C or or not that's a good question but if it's just a resource anyway, it's the, 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 it's the, easy to move there's an issue there so we can discuss it in in computer management and if we decide where's, that we want to where's the link somewhere not yeah. on my Share share it on the on the Discord and then because I haven't seen that in, on Discord, but share it on Discord and we can go out and have a look. But yes, that that would be a good one. All right, anything else? Anyone else? Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much for the demos and sharing. We can't wait to announce when you have been source it, and then uh, we will try to contribute and at least make it available on the gallery because that would be really fun to try out, especially for the lazy people like me that just want to go install module and then install CLI and then uh, DSC CLI and then just run and do some some stuff and try. Hopefully, I can fix the uh, build uh, in in the weekend, and I'll, I'll probably uh, I'll I mean, it uh, public. What's an open source project when the when the build doesn't break? You know, every now and then, so, you know, obviously. I'll send the, I'll, I'll send you a chat. <laughs> All right, cool, Ryan. I was going to say it's just that every open source project has got the the build hasn't worked. It still can't get the build to work. Still can't get the build to work. So yes. you know. It, it's all fun games, you know. It's it's a good experience, and um, yeah, I'll thank you for it. adding to the community. And when you think you got your things together, then there's a new release of some new version, like Git version or something else, that just breaks what you had. Experience talking. So yeah. All right, on that note, because uh, we still have a short night, uh, and then it's uh, it's the evening here. I wish you a good day, evening, and thank you very much for joining the call. Uh, Mike, please, can you stop the recording? Yep, just.